Hi, this is just a short video to introduce you to the idea of chirality and in particular chirality in regards to organic molecules. Okay. Now, you probably have not met the word chirality before but you certainly know the concept. Okay. Chirality is just the, the, the fact that um, an object might not be superimposable with its mirror image. Okay. Now, the best example of that are your hands. Okay. Your left hand is a non-superimposable mirror image of your right hand. Okay. And there's absolutely nothing you can do to rotate or or superimpose these two on the, on one another such that your left hand looks like your right hand. Your left hand and your right hand are non-superimposable mirror images. They're chiral. Okay. Now, if two objects are non-superimposable mirror images of one another, we call each of those objects enantiomers of one another. So your left hand is an enantiomer of your right hand. Okay. Now, chirality as a concept isn't just restricted to organic chemistry. Obviously, your hands are chiral, and the word chirality um, is derived from the Greek word meaning hand, okay, just because of this effect. Now, let's have a look at chirality as it, as it refl is involved in the three-dimensional shape of organic molecules, okay. So here on the left I have a, a molecule and we have a carbon attached to four different things. Okay, I've then put a mirror in between this, next to this, and I've drawn out the mirror image of this molecule. Okay. So this molecule is the mirror image of that molecule. Now there is absolutely nothing I could do to this molecule on the right to superimpose it on the molecule on the left. These molecules are enantiomers of one another. Now, normally I, do, I demonstrate this with a three-dimensional model. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this molecule in the software to, to try to demonstrate that they're non-superimposable mirror images. Okay? Or rather that the mirror images are non-superimposable. So, if you look at this, we have the chlorine and the hydroxyl group you think of an axis down uh, through this carbon in the center. The chlorine and the hydroxyl group in this one are on the right, whereas in this one they're on the left. And the hydrogen here is on the right, whereas on the, uh, it's on the left there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this molecule and I'm going to try to put the chlorine and the hydroxyl group on the right hand side and I'm going to see what happens to the other two groups. So, okay. so I'm just highlighting this and then I'm just going to rotate it in the software. Okay. Sadly we lose the, the labels when we do this but all the, all the atoms stay in the same position. Okay. There we go. So we're rotating nicely. I am going to so you'll see that we set out to put the chlorine and hydroxyl group on the right hand side and there we go, chlorine and hydroxyl group are on the right hand side. The chlorine is sticking out of the page towards us, it's got this solid wedged bond to it. The hydroxyl group has this dashed wedged bond to it so it's going behind the plane of the page. So on this side certainly it looks, it looks like that. The trouble is, is if you look at the methyl group and the hydrogen now, here we've got hydrogen, there we've got methyl, we've got methyl group here, we've got the hydrogen there. So in rotating the molecule, we can get some bits to overlap, but we can't get the other bits. And we can never get all the bits of the molecule to overlap all at the same time. They're not superimposable. Okay? And I can sit here and I could rotate this molecule as much as I like. I can never get these molecules to look the same. Okay, 
They are non-superimposable mirror images of one another. This left-hand molecule is an enantiomer of the right-hand molecule. Okay. Now, what this does is it affects the three-dimensional shape of these molecules. Okay. Now, you might ask me, why is this important? Okay. Now, proteins and enzymes, they're the bits in, of your body that, that do the chemistry that keeps you alive. And they're what drugs bind to in order to have an effect. Now, proteins and enzymes can tell the difference between different enantiomers. Okay. And what that means is that different enantiomers can have very different effects. Okay. For instance, if you're an asthmatic, you probably take um, salbutamol to help you breathe more easily. Okay. Now, the uh, enantiomer that you'll get... Now, salbutamol is chiral, and the enantiomer that you get in your, your inhaler helps you breathe more easily. If you take the opposite enantiomer though, that's been shown, was shown to cause things like heart attacks and palpitations. Okay? So you're getting very different effects from having these different enantiomers and that's because essentially their three-dimensional shape is different and therefore they bind to proteins and enzymes in a different way. Chirality is therefore incredibly important in, in the pharmaceutical industry, for medicines, for biochemistry. Okay. Uh, in the next videos, we'll, or the next series of videos, we'll talk about how chemists develop rules that we can be able to name a different enantiomer from another and how we can tell that apart, them apart. Okay. And these tools are incredibly important for helping chemists to communicate the chirality of the molecules that they're dealing with. Okay. So, to recap, chirality is a special case of stereoisomerism where the uh, object has the potential of having a non-superimposable mirror image. Two non-superimposable mirror images of an object are called enantiomers, okay, and there is no way that you can rotate one enantiomer to make it look like another enantiomer. Okay, thank you.